student, I'm Mr. Leung. Today, I'm going to talk about the study skills of the topic of tropism. And in this video, I shall remind you the four basic steps to present your answer in a logical way for the tropism questions. Before we start, I need to remind you about the study skills. Firstly, there must be something we really need to prepare. There are some common languages and terminologies in biology. Secondly, when facing different topics, we have a way to think logically. The key questions need us to join all the dots together. Last but not least, we can construct the knowledge finally. Let's have a very brief definition of the terms first. Irritability, which is the one of the seven characteristics of the organisms. It is the ability of an organism to detect changes in the environment and make response. There are three key elements in, in the irritability, which are detection, coordination, and reaction. I would like to use human being as an example. Firstly, the receptors detect the stimulus like light or sound and generate the nerve impulses. Then our nervous system acts as the coordinating system to analyze the nerve impulses. Finally, the nerve system will send nerve impulses to the effectors, such as muscles, to do the bodily reaction. For example, we run away or we withdraw our arm, okay, something like this. One reminder is that the coordination system can also be endocrine system, and the effectors can be the target organs in our body. For the movement, it's easy to understand that it's the ability of moving the whole or the part of the body. In human being, it's easy to realize that we can move one arm, move one leg, or move our whole body to do different postures. So how about the plants? They can also move, but just not move in the whole body. The common example is the light tropism, which we are going to talk about in this video. Meanwhile, there are different examples like touch me not or the plants they feed on the animal. They can also move. Then the focus of this video is the tropism. As I mentioned in the lesson, there are three elements in the definition of tropism. Firstly, tropism is directional. Secondly, tropism is the growth movement. Thirdly, tropism is in response to an unilateral stimulus. The tropism can be positive or negative. The positive tropism means that the plants move towards the unilateral stimulus, and the negative tropism means that the plants move away from the unilateral stimulus. In this chapter, we learn about a plant hormone called auxins. This group of plant hormones are responsible to regulate the plant growth. And you can see that the site of auxin production is at the tip of the shoot and the root. After the auxins are produced in the tip of the shoot or the root, they are transported to the region of elongation. One reminder for the position of the region of elongation is just behind the tip. Then the auxin regulate the process of cell elongation which will increase the length of the cells. And this increased length is regarded as the primary growth in the plant. As a hormone, it will not exert its effect on the tissue where the hormones are produced. The hormones will exert their effects on the target regions. So I would like to remind you that auxins do not affect the growth at the extreme tips of the shoot and the root where the auxins are produced. And the auxin will exert their effect on the region of elongation. So before we name the group of the plant's hormone as auxins, there were a lot of scientists making contribution on the investigation of tropism. Apart from appreciating their works and the nature of science, we can draw the following conclusions bit by bit. This helps us to construct the ideas how auxins are working on the plant's growth in the questions. From Darwin's experiment, we know that no tip, no growth and the tip is very sensitive to the unilateral light. From Jensen's experiment, we know that there is something produced in the tip, and this something will move down from the tip to the region of elongation. From Powell's experiment, we know that the increased concentration of that something will promote the shoot growth faster and cause bending. From Wen's experiment, the unilateral light leads to the uneven distribution of the chemicals in the tip. So you can see that 
for the scientists, they carry out the experiment bit by bit. They make some modification and then they draw some new conclusion and help us to construct the knowledge of the plant hormone. Finally, we name it auxins. After talking about all the terminologies and the findings of the scientific investigation, we are using four basic questions to analyze the growth response of the plant. Now, uh, we use the diagram below as the example. This example is about the growth response of the plant under unilateral light. There are four basic guiding questions to lead us to describe and explain the growth response of the plant under unilateral illumination in a logical order. Firstly, we need to mention if there is any lateral oxygen movement. If there is uniform illumination and darkness, there is no natural oxygen movement. Now, the situation is unilateral light illumination, therefore, there will be lateral movement of oxygen. And the lateral movement of the oxygen will need to uneven distribution of oxygen in the tip. So that's why we have the second question. And the concentration of the oxygen in different parts of the plant will need to stimulation or inhibition of the growth. So we need to mention the unequal growth rate of the illuminator side and the shader side. Finally, we can draw the conclusion that the possible result, that means the possible growth response of the plant. So let's take a look at the four questions. Question one, is there any lateral oxygen movement due to the unilateral light in illumination? If so, we need to talk about the movement is from which side to which side. Remember that the direction is very important. If you only talk about there is a lateral movement of oxygen but not specify the direction, that's not enough. It's meaningless. So we can point out that due to the unilateral light illumination, the oxygen produced by the tip migrate or move from the illuminated side to the shaded side. Question 2. After talking about the lateral movement of oxygen from the illuminated side to the shaded side, we need to talk about the uneven distribution of oxygen. Of course, if you only mention there is uneven distribution of oxygen in the tip, it is not specific enough. Therefore, we need to specify that there is a higher concentration of oxygen in the shaded side than the concentration of oxygen in the illuminated side. So we can point out that due to the unilateral light illumination, this leads to an uneven distribution of oxygens. The oxygen's concentration in the illuminated side is lower than that in the shaded side. From this slide, you can see that question 1 links the logic with the question 2. Thirdly, we need to talk about the unequal growth rate caused by the uneven distribution of oxygen. In the topic of oxygen, there is a very important mindset to study the tropism. The mindset is that the effect of growth varies with concentration and the part of the plant concerned. So that's why we do not only talk about there is oxygen or not. We need to consider the concentration of the oxygen, high or low. And also, once the oxygen arrives, the part of the region of elongation. It also depends on uh, whether the region of elongation is in the shoot or is in the root. So it will uh, affect our result. Therefore, we cannot simply memorize or assume the higher concentration of oxygen must promote the growth of the plant. It depends on the part of the plant as well. So we need to consider the concentration and the parts of the plant in the question. In the question 3, we, uh, when we talk about the unequal growth rate, we have to mention which side is growing faster than the other side. So we can point out that an increased concentration of oxygen promotes the growth of the shoots. <clears throat> so the illuminated side grows slower than the shaded side. So you may think that, oh, Mr. Leung, can I say that the shaded side will grow faster than the illuminated side? Yes, of course you can. And for the root, an increased concentration of oxygen inhibits the growth of the roots. So the illuminated side grows faster than the shaded side. Last but not least, we need to talk about the result. When talking about the result, we need to mention the two basic dimensions of growth learned in this chapter. One dimension is about the growth. Does the certain parts of the plant grow? No growth or grow faster or grow slower. And the other is about the bending. Any bending observed. So the case uh, can be growing straight, 
screwing with bending in a large angle or a small angle. So we can point out that. As a result, the chute will grow and bend towards the unilateral light source. Or as a result, the root will grow and bend away from the unilateral light source. After these four guiding questions, probably we can describe and explain the growth response of the plant in a very logical way. It is a systematic thinking way to organize and present our ideas.